All right, so let's go again. The first one, oil spilled from a tanker spreads in a circle whose circumference increases the rate of 40 feet per second. How fast is the area of the spill increasing when the circumference of the circle is 100 uh, feet? So what are the two formulas that we're using? Circumference and area. All right, of a circle, what's your circumference? What's your area? What's it asking? How fast is the what? So this is the one we're going to drop. Whatever question it asks, the one that you're going to drop. So what do we use this one for? To plug in for variables. Everybody understand that? All right. So how do I fix this? What is the only variable over here? R. So how do we fix it? Mm -hmm. So we get area equals pi times c over two pi squared. Clean that up. <clears throat> c squared pi over four pi squared. Two squared is four and then pi squared. <clears throat> What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen right here? One of your paths will cancel out. So the formula that you're looking at is C squared over four pi. What do I do to that formula? Mm -hmm. So we have dA over dt equals, your one over four pi can come out, why? It's a constant, derive C squared. What do I have to put? Hmm? DC over DT, because we're doing it with respect to time. All right, what do they give us? Okay, which rate? The circumference rate is 40. So that's going to be DC over DT. So I'm going to write this over here. That was from the problem. What else did they give us? So we get equals one over four pi, two times 100 times 40. <clears throat> I took the four out of this and put a 10 so it was easier for me to multiply. What's two times 100? Sorry, yes. Thank you. I literally have that on my paper. All right. Took the 10 out so I could multiply. Also take the pi out. I'm sorry, take the four out so I get 10. What's two times 100? Times 10 is? What are our units? We're dealing with area. Feet squared, good. Okay. I'm just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> All right, number two. Number two, a spherical balloon is inflating at a rate of 27 pi inches cubed per second. How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing when the radius is three inches. What's the only thing they talk about in this? What's the volume of a circle? You guys need to memorize this one. And I'm not being mean. You haven't used them in a long time, um, but you need to memorize them. Remember it's cubed. So remember what I told you, I think about it as making sure that you have that cube. So you know it's gonna be pi r cubed because it's volume, four thirds. I just remember that the three is on the bottom. So what's surface area? What's surface area? Four. Four what? 
Pi r, pi r squared because of the area. <clears throat> Got it. So the foreign hemispheres. So every time, every time, this is again how I remember them is I think about like the Earth has four hemispheres or whatever. Y'all, I mean, I know that sounds crazy. So a sphere has four hemispheres. So there's always going to be a four in that formula. And then because it's cubed, I have to take that three out of there. So I put that three out of that. I don't know. That's just how I relate it. Do it however you need to. All right. What do I do? What's my formula? What do I do? Yeah, I want to go ahead and derive it because I don't have another formula to plug into. So I, I skipped that plug in part because I don't have it. So what is it going to be? dv over dt. Yep. But what's going to happen? What am I going to do to it? I'm going to multiply it by three. When I multiply it by three, what happens? Yeah, so it just gives you that four. You can pull out the pi. And then I multiply by three. What happens to the r? And then I have to put. Good. That's the only thing that I tend to forget sometimes. I have to go back and be like, oh my gosh, grab it. All right. What do they give you in the problem? Where does that go? It's actually the volume. How do you know it's the volume? Keep reading. It just cubes. It just cubes. So worst case, if you don't know the verbiage, look at your units. Because it's cubed, that's definitely the volume. So 27 pi. What else do they give you? And the radius is 3. All right, so dv over dt is 27 pi equals 4 pi r was 3 squared. And we're solving for dr over dt. We get 27 pi equals, what's 3 squared? Times 4 is? Yeah, 36 pi times dr dt. How do we solve? Divide 36 pi. Guys, your pi's cancel out. Both will reduce by what? 9. 27 divided by 9 is? 36 divided by 9 is? That's your dr over dt. What's your units? Your radius was in inches. Your time was in seconds. Why is it not cubed? It would be the volume. Okay, so if we had dv over dt, then yes, it would be inches cubed over whatever time we had or time was seconds. So this little thing right here will tell you what your units are. Okay. Number three. Cars A and B leave town. This one is the a weird one, but once you get in this one, there's another one that's kind of like it, so it makes it a little bit easier. All right, A and B leave town at the same time. Car A heads due south at a rate of 80 kilometers per hour, and car B heads due west at a rate of 60 kilometers per hour. So south and west from the same, yep, from the same starting point makes a right triangle because you want to know the distance between them. How fast is the distance between the cars increasing after three hours? I'm doing A, B, and D. The reason I'm doing D is because the D is the distance that we want. So knowing that's what formula do we use? Uh -huh. So I would do A squared plus B squared equals that distance squared. You can go ahead and derive this formula. So what would I get? 2A dA over dt. That's the rate at what car A is going. Plus 2B dB over dt. And then dB over dt. What do you notice about all of them? They have a two, so we can factor that out because it's not going to matter anyway. What do we know? 
A's rate is what? And B's rate is? And I what? Say it one more time. I don't have A, B, or D. Remember, I'm looking for the, the distance rate. I don't know the, I don't, I don't know. How do I get A, B, and D? What are we looking for? Sort of. If we're looking for distance, let me have another formula for distance. Dirt distance. Yeah, your your third dirt formula or whatever you guys call it, D equals R T. So if we talk about A and distance equals rate times time, what was your rate for A? 80. How long are we doing this? Three hours. So what does that give you? So that's going to be your A. So now I can put this here. You're going to do the same thing with B. <laughs> What's your rate? Hours is, which gives you 180. Well, then I still need to find D. How do I do that? I have A is 240 and B is 180. Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Back in the Pythagorean theorem. So to find D, you're going to do A squared plus B squared equals your distance squared. So you're going to take the square root of that. You will get that your D is. 300. Put this one side all in your calculator, you get 30,000 equals 300 dd over d2. How do I solve? I get dd over d2 equals 100. What was our distance units? Kilometers, Kilometers and our time was hours. Any questions? You ready good? All right, number four. Another formula that you need to remember is the area of an equilateral triangle. I think we've used this one other time, and I think I've used it in pre out like one time. So if you don't know it, that's okay, but try to know it today, who's that, okay? So your formula. Area equals S squared times the square root of three over four. The size of an equilateral triangle increasing at a rate of 27 inches per second. How fast is the triangle's area increasing when the size of the triangle are 18 inches long? Does it talk about any other formula? No, there's no volume, there's no anything. So we're just gonna straight derive this. So when we derive it, what do we get? Start with your A. Mm -hmm. What can I do to that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and take out that square root of three over four. That leaves me with S squared. How to derive S squared. And then? Yes, over D2. So knowing the formula makes it a lot easier. I wouldn't expect that you know that. Again, we haven't been over it. 
All right. What do we know? So DS over DT, the side rate is 27. What else do we know? Sides are 18. So plug in. Square root of three over four, two times 18 times 27. Don't put the square root of three in your calculator. So just two times 18 times 27 divided by four gives you 243 square root of three. We have area on top. So what was our unit for area? Inches squared, what time? So inches squared per second. Again, your DA over DT will tell you exactly what units you put. Is everybody okay with the units? All right, number five. Okay, so an inverted conical container has a diameter of 42 inches and a depth of 15 inches. If water is flowing out of the vertex of the container at a rate of 35 pi inches cubed per second, how fast is the depth of the water dropping and the height is five inches? What's the only thing we need on this one, the formula? Volume of the what? Okay. So remember our volume formulas, one more time, just to go over. If they have a point, it's gonna have one third because we have a point on our cone, it's gonna be one third. Big B and H and big B stands for area of the base. In a cone, what is the base? So this is one third. How do I find the area of a circle? Pi r squared, and then times the height of the actual cone. What's wrong with this formula? Yeah, there's two variables, so I definitely need another formula. So this one doesn't come out and give you the formula, but I will tell you that your radius is proportional to your height, and that would give you a constant. So this is what you do. Your ratio or your radius is proportional to your height. Did they give us a radius? So they said the diameter was what? 42. So the radius is going to be? What's your height? What does that reduce to? Seven over five. So what this tells you is that R over H. Oh, wow. Why are you not at the zoo? You're not in that class? I thought you were. You can sub for either variable, it does not matter, but the one I would sub for is your R. And why would I choose R instead? What's the other measure that they give you? The five inches four height, so I wanna leave the H. Does everybody understand that? How do I solve this formula right here? This one for R. Uh -huh. You don't have to cross multiply. What do you, what, if I solve for R, just multiply by H. So what does that give you? Seven H over five. That's what we're gonna do. All right, so fix this formula. Volume equals one third pi instead of R, we're gonna have seven H over five squared times H. I'm gonna clean it up. One third pi, what's this gonna give you? Okay, so 49 H squared, but I have another H, so 
49 h cubed over. You can simplify more or you can go from here. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. What can I pull out? I'm going to take the derivative. What can I pull out? What else? Definitely the pi. What else can I pull out right here? 49 over 25. Derive h cubed. What do I write after that? Okay. What do we know? Which one is that one? Because it says 35 what? Pi inches cubed. We know that's the volume, right? So dv over dt. And what's happening to the water? Hmm. So what does that mean? Good. Since it's decreasing, it's going to be negative. So those are what we're going to plug in and we're going to solve for our dh over dt. So dv over dt was negative 35 pi. One third pi, 49 over 25. Three times five squared is 25. DH over DT. I'm going to multiply all the top together. 49, sorry, times three times 25. And then what's three times 25? divided by 75 gives me 49. So I have negative 35 pi equals 49 pi dh over dt. I'm sorry, negative 35. I set up but didn't write it. What do I do? Divide by 49 pi. Your piles will cancel out. So what is negative 35 over 49 reduced to? What was our height units? Inches. What was our time? Inches per second. Any questions? All right, number six. This one is like the other one that we just did about the cars. A boat is being pulled toward a dock by a rope attached to its bow through a pulley on the dock seven feet above the bow. If the rope is hauled in at a rate of four feet per second, how fast is the boat approaching the dock when 25 feet of rope is out? Anytime it talks about being above, something is there and it's above. So about it, think about like a dock sitting above the water. It's not like a floating dock. It's like sitting up. So it is seven feet above this dock is. This diagonal is going to be your rope. And your cute little boat is at the end. What do you know about the rope? Four feet per second. Okay, that's the rate, but I don't have a rate right now. Well, I mean, no, you're fine. You're, we'll use it. Minute. The rope is 25 feet long. How does a rope what? It's not walking. It is the rate at which it's being pulled in from the pulley. I'm sorry, what? What are you talking about? How do they not understand that it's going in? No, we get that. We're just not I, 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 I see where I go. I, I mean, hey. I feel you. Y'all are sassy today with me, and I don't like it. I do not like it. What do we do now? 
Shut up. How do we set this up? When you can do C squared, it's not going to matter. What is C going to be? It's going to be the what? The rope, right? So if you wanted to put R for rope, that's perfectly fine. So that way you know which rate was which one. What is the only thing that is not going to have a rate? The dock is not moving. Does everybody understand that? So when we do this formula, we can go ahead and plug the dock in. But we cannot plug in for the rope or the boat because it's moving. Does everybody understand that? So think about that. Take your derivative. What happens to seven squared? It goes away, right? So again, why did I not derive that, that value right there? Because it's not moving. The dock is stationary. There will not be a rate. If you needed to and you went ahead and derived it, what would the rate be? We are still almost five anyway. So everybody understand that? All right. So we get derived to uh, B squared. Derived C squared. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Take out the two, just like the last problem, because they both have a two. Do I know what B is? This was A, this was C. Do I know what B is? You do know what it is. How do you know what it is? Do what? How can you figure out what it is? Plug it into what? Put that right there. Yeah, it's, it's a right triangle, right, guys? Please stop. It's a right triangle, so we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to find it. How would you find it? Tell me what you'd do. How would you do it? Because y'all are lazy, right? No, I mean that in a bad way. What would you do? How would you do it in your calculator so you don't have to write anything down? Okay, just kidding. We'll use the formula. We'll use the formula. 7 squared plus b squared equals 25 squared. So what would I do? I get b squared equals 25 squared minus 7 squared gives me 576. What would I do? Square root of 576 is... I literally just wrote it down, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I don't like that. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You get what you give. <laughs> There's no arguing with it. What should be? I wasn't. I was thinking of 25 minus 7. Oh, I fully am aware of what you were thinking. Okay, carry on. I'm trying. Okay, go ahead. Be my guest. Well, thank you for allowing me to. <laughs> what is B? 24. What's your rate? Do you know that one? Four. Which rate do you know? The rate of the rope. So, do we know the rate of B? No, so that's the one we're keeping. How long was the rope? 25, and what was the rate of that rope? Say it again. Four. four, sorry. Is it just four? What's happening to the rope if you're pulling the boat in? It's negative four. It's getting shorter. So it should be a negative four. So we get 24 dB over dt. What is 25 times negative four? Negative 100. We're going to divide by 24. If you don't know what it is, be lazy and put it in your calculator and you get negative 25 over six. What was your units for B? How far was the boat? Say what? Feet. What was our units of time? Seconds. 
Any questions? Seven. <clears throat> a six foot tall woman is walking at a rate of four feet per second away from a street lamp that is 24 feet tall. How fast is the length of her shadow changing? So we have the lamp, we have the woman, she's gonna have a shadow, we're just connecting it all. This is the woman. This is the lamp. Here's her shadow. Okay. So what? This is math two. Where were you in math two? <laughs> right. You say what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. That's what I just said. Yes. That's what I'm telling you. So this was part of that math too. So when we look at this, these are triangles. It's not a big deal. What what do we know? Your light pole is 24. She's six feet. We don't know either one of these. These are going to be similar triangles. That means they're the same angles and they're in proportion, but they are not equal. Does everybody understand that? So we're going to set up a proportion. It does not matter how you set it up. Some of you will see it as 24 over 6 equals x over. We'll talk about the rest of it in a minute. So you'll see it as uh, 6 over y because that's a little triangle. It, it don't matter just as long as you stay consistent with how you work. If you go left to right or up and down, it doesn't matter. So I do. I do the big over the little, again, does not matter. So 24 over six. So this big triangle is 24. That same measure was six on the little triangle. Big triangle, how would I get that? If this was six and this was five, thank you. And then the same measure on the little one is the bottom of the little one is y. Okay. There is no other formula to use. There's nowhere else to go. So we're going to solve this down. How do I solve it down? I want to simplify it. Say it again. Yeah, you can go ahead and simplify that. What do I do now? Nope, because it's x plus y. Cross multiply. So I get 4y equals x plus y. What can I do now? Yeah, get your y's together. This is the equation that you're going to derive. That's much easier to derive than the 24 over 6 and x plus y over y. All right, so derive this for me. Three dy over dt equals dx over dt. What do we know? Hmm, which one is that? Why is it X and not Y? What is Y? The shadow. Remember, the shadow is going to be in front of her because the light's behind her. Common sense. So we're looking at just the X. So DX over DT. She's walking away. Is that right good? <clears throat> we are looking for DY, DT. So there's nothing else to plug in. So three. DY over DT equals negative four. How do I solve? So I get DY over DT equals negative four thirds units per. There you go. Any questions? So it's pretty easy again once you get it set up and solved.
Number eight. So again, a formula area of the sector that you may not have seen in a while, it is from math three, the formula for area of the sector. Is degree over 360. This is the one from Math 3. And it's part of the area of the circle, so pi r squared. We could also do radians and 2 pi right here. Does everybody understand that? You okay with that? Why 2 pi? That's 360, right? Okay. Tell me what it says. The minute hand of a clock is six inches long. What does that tell you? The radius is six. We'll just write this stuff down. Starting from noon, how fast is the area of the sector swept out by the minute hand increasing in inches squared per minute at any instant? So the only thing they give us is radius. So we got to figure everything else out. What's happening with the minute hand? What's it doing? What does it always do? It goes what? How long does it take to get through that circle? So we're going to do revolutions per minute. How many times does it go around the clock? In a Tell me, how many times it go around the clock? One, not once a minute, but once every 60 minutes. One revolution is how much? I get 60 minutes. Go back to 360 degrees or two pi. Why would I want to use two pi instead of my degrees? Look at your, look at your equation. Do you have a pi in the equation? So that's the reason I'm not using the 60 degrees. Can you? Surely can. You absolutely can. But again, it's going to make it a little bit easier on those pi shifts and swap for you. All right. So one revolution or a full circle every 60 minutes reduces to what? Pi over 30. We're going to use this in just a second. So we're going to do our angle over 2 pi equals area over pi r squared. And then I want to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to solve for A. So how do I do that? So I get pi r squared theta. I'm not even going to cross multiply. I'm just going to multiply my pi r squared so that I can get a by itself. What do you see? That's what I'm talking about. So your pi's will cancel out. And then what do I do? What do we know? See how many variables we have? You guys see that, how many variables we have? We wanna have one, right? One and whatever else we need. So technically two, but we wanna eliminate having three. So what can I plug in for? R is six, so what is R squared? And then what does that reduce to? Thirty-six divided by two. This is your formula that you're gonna derive. Makes it much easier than looking at the beginning. So what is your derivative? DA over DT. And this is area of a sector. So I just quit putting an S on there so you didn't have two of them. And then 18 theta would be what? First. Yeah, so if it's like 18 X, think about it like that. What are you gonna derive it? 18 and then D theta over DT. What is our angle rate? 
we're looking for our area of the sector rate. We're looking because it says uh, how fast is the area of the sector swept. So I know I'm looking for that. So what's the only other thing I haven't used for this? Yes. So this is d theta over dt. That's where that's coming from. So why did we do revolutions for a minute? What is your theta going to be? Your two pi, that's your angle. You're going all the way around the circle. What was your time for that? It took 60 minutes to do that. So we get 18 times pi over 30. What is 18 over 30 reduced to? Three over six. Three over five. This is area of a sector with respect to time. So what was our area units? Make sure that you put the squared on there. What was our time? Minutes. Very good. Go to 13. 13 is quick. What order does this go in? So like your velocity and your acceleration and everything. Position, say it again. And acceleration. So derivative will get you all of those. It gives you uh, a position function. It says find the velocity and acceleration. It's not looking for a specific number. It's looking for what? The derivatives. So we're gonna do the velocity by taking the derivative of the first one. So what's the derivative of t cubed minus nine t squared plus 24 t? And then to find the acceleration, you just find the derivative of that, which is, that's number one. Two says the th same thing. I'm gonna put the position function up here just so you guys have it. Sine two T plus cosine T. I need the velocity. What's the derivative of sine two T? And the derivative of cosine t. Any questions on that one? And now do the acceleration. Oh. Oh. That was how you. I'm not the only one. Eliza got one this time. What's your derivative here? How'd you get four? Yep. So we have the two here times two is going to be four. It's a negative cosine. I'm sorry, a negative sine. So negative four sine two t. And then minus cosine t. All right, number three you want to know when it's changing direction. So direction change. Is you're going to take the first derivative of the velocity. That equal to zero. And chart and I'll explain all of that in a minute. Okay. So our position function was sine t over two. It said zero to four pi. What's your velocity gonna be? One half, derivative of sine, cosine. Over two. 
We set that equal to zero. What happens to your one half? It goes away. Now, listen to me carefully about your half angle formulas right here, okay? So when you have a half angle, you're gonna treat it just like normal. Where is cosine the X coordinate? So if I give it back, the X coordinate equal to zero. Which is at pi over two. Since it's a half angle, then we multiply by two. What does that give me? Ah. But this is from zero to two pi. Where am I going? So I have a full another revolution, right? So the way that you find that is I have a whole nother revolution that I have to look at. How do I add those? What's one half plus two? Which is? What's your fraction? Five over two. Five over two. But I'm doing half angle formulas. I'm sorry. What am I? Hold on. I'm gonna screw up. Mm -mm. I messed something up. Hold on. It should be three pi. Why should it be? Sorry, I don't even have to do this. Why should it be three pi? Because we started at pi and we're doing what to it? Two pi. Sorry, I was doing it the hard way. Screw something up. Why do we have to do this one again? Why do we have to do this one and not just stop at that one? Zero to four pi. So then you chart it. We have zero, pi, three pi, and we're going to four pi. Find a value between zero and pi, and then plug it in. Where do I plug it in at? We talked about this yesterday. The derivative. Make sure you plug it into the derivative. All right. So our derivative is what was our derivative? 0. 0.5 cosine x over two. You can put in one half. It doesn't matter. Why am I doing it this way so that I can ask it all of these values at one time and not have to plug it in 40 times? So you said pi over two gives me a what? What else can I plug in between pi and three pi? What's it give me? Oh, something's weird. I'm weird. This is better. What's it give me? Why did it do that? Yeah, it was in degrees and I was using radian. So sorry about that. Keep going. What can I plug in now? Don't make it hard. Something in between three and four. Yeah, your calculator's doing it, so don't worry about it. 3.5 gives you a positive. This positive tells us the particle is moving to the right. The negative is to the left, to the right, so it changes direction. Where does it change direction at? Right here at pi and at three pi. Sometimes it won't be both, sometimes it will. You'll do that again on seven and eight. Okay, so when we get to seven and eight, look at number four. The position function, find the distance that the particle travels from two to five. So what do we do first? We need to see if it does what first? What happened to this particle? What did it do? So if it changes directions, that'll change this. Like if they were all going positive, it would be really big numbers. So 
because it's gone positive and then coming back negative and then going positive, the distance traveled is going to be a little bit shorter. Does that make sense? All right. So what do we need to find first? If it has a what? A change in direction. So that will affect our, our distance. So how do we find a change in direction? Derivative. What is our derivative of this? We take that derivative, set it equal to zero. We get six t equals negative two. T equals negative one third. What was our interval that we were working with? Is this in the interval? So no direction change. If it would have been in the interval, we would have to test it, but it's not. So now we just need the position. Where's the start position and the finish position? And then we can find the distance. So your start position, we started at t equals two. We're going to plug that into the original formula because it's position three times two squared plus two times two plus four gives you 20. Our second value was five, three times five squared plus two times five plus four. It's going to give you 89. That's your finished position. So what is the distance? How do you find it? Which gives you? Yeah. Five says the same thing. We're going from zero to four. So what's the first thing that I need to do? Okay, so find your derivative. What is it? It also gives you that t has to be greater than zero. Same thing on this one. T was supposed to be greater than zero. This one is less than zero. So again, two reasons that it's not happening. All right, set it equal to zero. I get two t equals negative four. T equals negative two. Can we use that? Nope. So we're not worried about that. So now use your numbers in your original to find both positions and then subtract them. So we're gonna do x of zero and x of four. So into the original zero squared plus eight times zero is, oh, sorry, because I was doing it in my head, which equals negative four. I was just ahead of myself. Doesn't matter because what? It's still negative, but doesn't work. Plug them in. I get zero and 48. How do I find the distance? But on this one, I didn't have to subtract because I had a zero. So it went 48 units. Everybody good with this one? Number six. Position, find the velocity and acceleration. So what are we doing on that? Yeah, the derivative. So two, I'm gonna rewrite it sine t squared plus two cosine t squared. You can see it a little bit better like this. What's your velocity? Two times two is four. Think about chain rule, sine t, and then cosine t. All right, so two times two is four, take the inside and leave it alone, and then take the derivative of the inside. Plus, so it's actually gonna change it to a minus. What do you see? Look at them one more time, what? Hmm. 
why do they cancel? Even though these are flipped around, you guys know if it was like 4xy and 4yx, it's the same thing, okay? So this actually equals zero. So what is your acceleration function? What's the derivative of zero? Yeah, still zero. <coughs> so what do you know about this particle? It's not moving. Good job. Seven is just like the other one we did. We're trying to figure out if it's changing direction. How do we figure out if we're changing direction? The derivative of this one is? Set it equal to zero. Guess what? Can you factor it? Uh, so what do we gotta use? X equals negative 16 plus or minus the square root of minus four. Make sure you have a negative two all over two times three. You get negative 16 plus or minus the square root of 70 over six. I'm sorry, two square root of 70 over six. What do you know about these three numbers? And we get negative eight plus or minus the square root of 70 over three. Does everybody know how to get this two square root 70? Okay, let's go over that real fast. I always put in the numbers underneath no square root. So 16 squared minus four times three times negative two gives me 280. I need to find factors of 280. It doesn't matter what they are. What are, what are two factors of 280? Let's go a little bit bigger than that. Go a little bit. Say it again. Four and 70, I'll, I'll take that one. What's uh, your factors of four? Two and two, what's your factors of 70? 10 is two and five and seven, right? It doesn't matter which factors, you're, yours would have been fine. You could have been done 14 and 10, just two and seven, two and five, it, it's all the same. So I just wanted a little bit, what I really wanted was 28 and 10 because it was a little bit easier. Circle your pairs. So we have a pair of twos that will come out and then you write your leftovers. Five times seven is, times two is, there's where the two square root of 70 comes from. Okay, that's math one. Pretty simple, all right? So then work with your triangle of numbers instead of using your square root. And here's your numbers. If we do negative eight plus the square root of 70 over three and negative eight minus the square root of 70 over three, the plus gives us 0.1222. The minus gives us negative 5.455. Why is this important? What else did it tell us in number seven? T had to be greater than zero, so what? We're not testing this one at all because it's negative. Again, because T was greater than zero. So you're gonna make your chart. Your chart is gonna be from zero because that's what it said, T is greater than zero. You can do 1.222, that's fine. Or you can write the negative eight plus rate it. Nobody cares, whichever one you wanna do. Find a value between zero and 0.1222. So we're plugging it into 3x squared plus 16x minus 2. You said to use what? What do we get? A negative. Sorry. All right. And then a number bigger than 0. 0.1222. What else could you have used? 1, 2, 3, 4, anything bigger. 
You don't have to think too hard about that. I know the other one was. What do we get? What happens? So it said find out where there's a sign change. There's a sign change at eight plus the square root of 70 over three. Last one on this page, and then the five in the problem. If the position function is this, find when the particle is changing direction. So what do I need? What's the derivative? What can I do? And then what can I do? Mm -hmm. Same thing's gonna happen here. I can't factor x equals negative b, so two plus or minus the square root of two squared minus four times two times one, all over two times one. What is two squared? Four, what's four times two? Times one is eight. What's four minus eight? What do you know? No real solution, right? I'll write that at the top. No real solution. So will this ever change directions? No. The only way it'll change directions is if I have a value and I can plug it into the chart. chart. Right. While we're on this, let's go ahead and do four and five. So find where the velocity of a particle is zero if its position function is t o and t. What do we do? Say what? Yeah, because we got to find velocity, right? So velocity means take the derivative. What do we have to do for this? Product rule. Derivative of the first times the second. L and T plus the first, what's the derivative of L and T? Yep, we talked about that yesterday. What happens? And we get what? Plus one, don't forget the one. Who wants to know what? Where is equal to zero? How do I do that? Not add it, but how do I get ln to cancel out? So get e to the negative one equals t. How can I rewrite this negative power? One over e, which is t. Again, a particle changing direction. So what do we have to do first? Which is what do I do to that? What do I do? Placing the t minus two. Set both equal to zero. For the first one, I get zero. For the second one, I get two. Do I have to test both of them? Why? T has to be greater than zero, not equal to zero. So I don't have to test that one. So our values are going to be zero and two that we're testing. Twelve x squared minus twenty four x in here. Give me a value in between zero and two. And we get a negative bigger than two. 
and we get a positive. So where is it changing direction? All right, one, two, and three, I'll do on paper. We'll get through as much as we can and then do the rest more if we have to. So number one, it says a 25 foot ladder is sliding down a wall at negative six feet per second. How fast is the bottom of the ladder? Sliding out when the top of the ladder is 20 feet from the ground. Visualize a ladder up against the wall. What shape does it make? All right, triangle. I thought it was very sweet. No. <laughs> Don't shut out. We're good. We're good. Don't shut out. I'm not even upset. I never even thought about using that as a ringtone, but I think I have to. Oh, you're going to copy your name? I'll copy the Mandalorian one. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Same with today. What do I know? Where, which one's the ladder? The diagonal. Okay. That rate is going to be the ladder's rate. So our C, right? That's going to be our DC over DC. All right. What else? What else, Serena? Which one is that one? <laughs> They're all straight. <laughs> well, this one's not because I drew it, but <laughs> the vertical one. <laughs> the vertical one. All right. What, else? what are we trying to figure out? How fast the bottom of the ladder is. Okay. So, so what are we going to do? What's the one rate that we're not dealing with? Which what what's not moving, and I don't I don't mean that. Or what's not changing? The mm -mm. remember it's sliding down the wall. The ladder. The ladder. It will stay twenty five feet no matter what. It's not going to change. It's not getting shorter. It's not getting longer. So the reason that I tell you that is just like the boat. What was not changing in the boat problem? The dock was stationary. The ladder is not changing. It's not getting shorter or longer. It's just sliding down the wall. So it's just changing position. Okay, so when we do this and we do our a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we're going to actually put this value in and we don't have to derive that because it does not change. There's no rate of change for the latter. All right, so derive this one. 2a da over dt plus D, B over D, T, and here. What can I do? It's all those two. So I already used this. I don't need this at all. But I need my A and my B and my D, A over D, T, and looking for D, D over D, or whichever one I'm looking for. What's A? What's A? Did it give us a rate of that vertical? So negative six was the DA over DT. Plus, I don't have B, how do I find it? Yeah, what? Pythagorean theorem, so find B. How do we do that? Pythagorean theorem, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that it's 15. And we're looking for the rate of the ground movement. What's 20 times negative six? Negative 120, I'm gonna add it over and get positive, right? So again, 20 times negative six is negative 120. I need to move it to the other side and make it a positive 120. What do I do next? Then I get? It is eight. What was our measurement for the actual distance? Your units, sorry. Feet. What was our time frame? 
seconds. Let's do number three and I'll do number two tomorrow. Yeah, number number two is gonna take a lot longer and a lot more explaining. A spherical balloon is deflating at negative 24 pi inches cubed per second. How fast is the surface area of the balloon decreasing when the radius of the balloon is six inches? So what two formulas do we need? Surface area and volume of a sphere. What's your surface area? Hemispheres for its area. Pi r squared. Volume, same thing, four hemispheres. It's pi r cubed, and then that cubed reminds me to put a three underneath. What are we looking for? So this is the one we're going to derive. So derive it. Hold on. Eight pi r dr over dt. Eight pi. Do we know r? Do we know dr over dt? Yes or no? No. So we've yet to use this formula, right? Yeah, that's what we're looking for out of that formula. So what do I need to do to this formula to be able to get a DRDT? Derive it to, what else do I know from the problem? Okay, I derived this really quick. Four thirds times three is four pi r squared DR over DT. We know that our volume is negative 24 pi equals four pi, our radius you said was six. Six squared is, times four is blah, 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 divide it all over. And that will give you your rate of negative one sixth. So that goes up here. What's six times one six? Negative one times eight pi is negative pi. So your answer for number three is going to be. We'll do number two tomorrow. Thanks, y'all.